you, everyone, and welcome to our 5.30 Mass here at Sacred Heart Parish. Uh, once again this evening, we are very blessed to have a, a young man who's going to receive his First Communion today. So we welcome Blake Anderson, who will be receiving First Communion. He's the son of Brock and Christina Anderson. And so right after I give communion to the ex Extraordinary Ministers of the Eucharist, um, Blake and his family will come forward to receive, he'll receive his first communion. So again, we are very uh, uh, grateful for uh, this great event in his life. Um, today is the 20th Sunday of the Ordinary Time, and we pray, Turn your eye, eyes, O God, our shield, and look on the face of your anointed one. One day within your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. Let us stand.
A reading from the book of Revelation. A reading from the book of prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, observe what is right, do what is just, for my salvation is, is about to come, my justice about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord, ministering to him, loving the name of the Lord and becoming his servants. All who keep the Sabbath free from, from profanation, and to hold to my covenant. Then I will bring to my holy mountain and make joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar. For my house should be called a house of prayer for all people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. O God, let all nations praise you. O God, let all nations praise you. May God have pity on us and bless us. May he let his face shine upon us. So may your way be known upon earth, among all nations, your salvation. O God, let all nations praise you. May the nations be glad and exult, because you rule the people in equity. The nation on earth you guide. O God, let all nations praise you. May the people praise you, O God, May all the peoples praise you. May God bless us, and may all the ends of the earth fear him. O God, let all nations praise you. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles. I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous, and thus save some of them. For if the rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? For the gift and the call of God are irre irrevocable, just as you once disobeyed God, but have now received mercy because of, the, of their disobedience. So they have now disobeyed in order that, by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may now receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience, that he might have mercy upon all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Jesus proclaimed the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, for she keeps calling out after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. 
So as I mentioned, we're at the 20th Sunday of Ordinary Time. Uh, we always have this anticipatory Mass uh, Saturday night for the Sunday. And we hear a great lesson today. I want to share with you a cute little story that I think brings out uh, something that we all experience in our very multicultural society that we live in the United States. There was a, a Jewish family, the Cohen family from Texas, who participated in a cultural exchange program. They became the hosts of a rabbi from Moscow during the Christmas holidays. And so to treat the rabbi to a culinary experience, probably not available in his own country, the Cohens took him to their favorite Chinese restaurant. And after an enjoyable meal and pleasant conversation, the waiter brought the check and presented each person at the table with a small brass Christmas ornament as a complimentary gift. Everyone laughed when Cohen's father turned the ornament over and read the label that was made in India. Their laughter quickly subsided, however, when they realized that the rabbi from Mas Moscow had tears in his eyes. And they were wondering if he was really offended by this Christian holiday gift. But smiling, the rabbi shook his head and said, no, I was shedding tears of joy to be in such a wonderful country in which a Buddhist gives a Jew a Christmas gift made by a Hindu. <laughs> what a country this is. You know, we are a country that is made and has all different types of people and faiths. And one of the questions that our gospel poses to us today is where can faith be found? This is an important gospel, I think. It's one that we overlook. We kind of wonder, this is certainly out of character of Jesus to be so flippant and kind of mean to this Canaanite woman, but realize what's going on here. We're in the 15th chapter of Matthew. We're at, at, at verse 21. The 20 verses that precede this one talks about an encounter that Jesus had with the Pharisees. Jesus and the Pharisees sometimes were like oil and water. And the Pharisees were criticizing Jesus early on in the chapter because he was not observing the Jewish ritual washing of hands before they ate, which is a minor thing. It was one that you don't really find in the scriptures. And Jesus was very upset about it because the Pharisees tend to major in the minors. They make a big deal out of small things. And this was one of their traditions. So he responds by accusing them of hypocrisy. And he quotes the prophet Isaiah, this people honors me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. In vain do they worship, teaching as doctrines mere human precepts. And he concludes by saying, hear and understand, it is not what enters one's mouth that defiles a person, but what comes out of the mouth. That is what defiles him. He goes on to talk about, you know, the anger, the bitterness, the bad words. All that which comes from within is what defiles a person. And he's so upset that he now goes into what's called Syrophoenician pagan territory, which is where we find the gospel account today, where he meets this Canaanite woman. Canaanites uh, were people who didn't worship the one true God. They were kind of a, a synchronistic type of religion. They had some of Jewish traits, but a lot of pagan traits. They uh, worshiped a God called El, a creator God. And they also worshiped Baal, which is the storm God. I thought the storm God might have been called Dorico. You know, we had one of those storms this week, but that's what Baal was. Baal was, if you've heard about Baal, obviously, if you've read anything in the Old Testament. To emphasize even more the chasm between Jesus and this woman, the Lord says in the scripture today, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And put briefly, he has been sent to the people of the promise. That's where he was sent. He was Jesus, the Son of God, born as a person of the promise, the promise made to Abraham and his descendants, this promise fulfilled in time in the birth of Jesus, because as 
uh, John says salvation comes from the Jews. It was to them that Christ was born according to the flesh, was sent at this fulfillment of time. It was to them that he was the promised savior of both Jews and Gentiles, the non-Jewish world as well, which is why we're here. He was born from a people of the promise, the Jewish people. Do you know what the word Israel means? It means the one who sees God. Isn't that interesting? Israel means the one who sees God. With good reason, Israel applies to any one of us who see the face of God in Christ, who encounter Christ in these sacraments, in the word that we share, in the prayers that we pray. In fact, Pius XI, in September of 1938, made the statement, he said, the promise was made to Abraham and his descendants, through Christ and in Christ, we are spiritual descendants of Abraham. No, it is not possible then for Christians to take part in any type of anti-Semitism. Anti-Semitism is inadmissible because spiritually, Pius XI says, we are all Semites. Spiritually, we are part of Israel. We see the face of God in the face of Christ. So here is a Canaanite woman who Jesus says at the end, woman, you have great faith because persistently she sees in Jesus the fulfillment, the one who can heal her daughter. And she doesn't back off when Jesus tries to, you know, dissuade her. All the more, she's persistent. Notice last week, remember the big storm in the gospel, which we had on Monday, but we read about a big storm on Sunday and Saturday night. But remember that storm and Peter comes out of the water and then he begins to sink and he says, Lord, save me. And what does Jesus say? Oh, Peter, why did you have little faith? Where's your faith? Why did you doubt? And then today we have in this Canaanite woman, this follower of Baal and El, we have this woman recognizing in Jesus God, who can save her daughter. There's an important lesson in this. Back in 2008, Pope Benedict turned his attention in, the, in his papal audience to the conversion of St. Paul. Remember, St. Paul was a Pharisee who was zealously persecuting the followers of Jesus. Benedict XVI said that the conversion of St. Paul shows that Christianity is not a new philosophy or a new form of morality, but, Pope Benedict said, an encounter with the person of Christ, an event that ignites a personal relationship with him. The Pope explained that Paul's encounter on the road to Damascus was not with concepts or ideas, but with the person of Jesus himself. Paul, the Pope continued, met not only the historical Jesus of the past, but the living Christ who was revealed to him as Savior and Lord. And this encounter caused Paul's own being to die and another one to be born with the living Christ. It renewed him. He concluded Christianity is not a new philosophy or a form of morality. We are only Christians if we encounter Christ, even if he does not reveal himself to us clearly and irresistibly as he did to Paul in making him the apostle of the Gentiles. We encounter him, the Pope said, in Holy Scripture, in the liturgy. We encounter him in prayer, in the liturgical life of the church. But encounter him we must if we are Christians. That's where our faith belongs. Like that Canaanite woman who showed up St. Peter of all people, who just a few moments earlier had expressed some doubt during a stormy night. I don't know how the storm was for you this week. It was pretty, um, it was pretty difficult for, for many of us. Luckily the weather held out. Um, for me, I must admit it was kind of a blessing because I had nothing I could do except to spend some more time in prayer. 
And you might think, well, that's easy for you to say you're a priest. Well, I don't, I don't pray sometimes as well as I should. But I just found myself in the quiet and not being able to do anything else to going back to some basics, to scripture, to the rosary, to just seeking the face of God in the quiet of the moment and learning to trust. Yes, trust that the lights will come on again. So together we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father of the Light, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sin. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. I feel the world to come. As we assemble in faith, let us bring these our prayers before the Lord. For the church that we may be housed in the house of prayer for all peoples, welcoming everyone who seeks the Lord with a sincere heart, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our leaders, that they may observe what is right and do what is just, and in so doing, lead us in pursuing justice and goodness for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For immigrants and refugees around the world who seek a better life for themselves and their families, that they may be kept safe from harm as they seek a new home. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those affected by the severe storm that devastated our communities this past week, for those injured that they recovered, and for those whose lives were disrupted that they find the strength and resources to rebuild, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our children returning to school during these, during these challenging times, and for their teachers and administrators, that all will be kept safe. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish community, that we may be willing to reach out to others and welcome, in, welcome them into our community of faith. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, that the Lord may welcome them into, into their eternal home. We pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, in the fullness of time, you sent your very Son as our Redeemer and Savior. May we draw close to him who draws ever close to us. And we ask all these things through the same Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for your goodness we have received the wine we offer you through the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. With humble spirit. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God and the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept sacrifice and yours. Receive our oblation, O Lord, by which is brought about a glorious exchange, that by offering what you have given, we may merit to receive your very self through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people of your own possession to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we proclaim the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest, blessed to see you who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, 
together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. So we stand together as God's holy people. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, it is my peace that I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. Please acknowledge God's peace among one another. I think I will only need one Eucharistic minister besides myself today. There's not that many of us here. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Just a reminder, uh, receiving Holy Communion with our masks on, just uh, when the minister gives you Holy Communion, just pick it up with one hand, step aside, pull your mask down or up, receive the Blessed Sacrament, put your mask down and return. Uh, just remain where you are. And after um, we give communion to our uh, first communicant, Blake, um, we'll come up and give the rest of you. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Lord Jesus, increase our faith that we may encounter you in these holy sacraments. Help us to reverence your presence and never take for granted the precious gift we receive. Let us pray. May partakers of Christ through these sacraments, we humbly implore your mercy, Lord, that conform to the image, his image on earth, we may merit also to be his co-heirs in heaven, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We have announcements tonight, believe it or not. Um, I will be uh, gone uh, Monday to Thursday of this week. Uh, there will be no Masses here on Tuesday and Thursday evening at 5.15, but Father Bill Reynolds has agreed to have Mass here on Monday and Wednesday at 11.30. So again, I'll be back here for Friday morning Mass. Next Sunday at 9 a.m. at the Mass, a week from tomorrow, Bishop Zincula will be here to officially install me as your pastor. So it will become official a week from tomorrow. Uh, there, was, there is no bulletin this week due to the dreaded uh, Duraco storm that we had. I hope all of you survived okay. Um, there's an offertory basket on your way out. We want to thank all those who are supporting the church during this time. We really appreciate it. And I want to thank all the folks who helped clean the parish campus this morning. There were about 30 of us who raked and gathered leaves and put them in a pile and blew the other leaves and stuff other places. So I want to thank all those people. What a great parish this is, you know, and it just kind of word went out and we got the campus looking halfway decent. So again, I hope all of you survived everything okay this week and got power back. Got mine back last night. I was praising God for at least an hour, shouting the Lord's praises. So it was great to have power back. Have a wonderful weekend. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Congratulations again to Blake. And let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen.